Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie comic interview. It is your Caped Crusader, Cody, and we are keeping it geekly with my brand new friend, R. Robert Garcia. We're here to break down his brand new indie comic called Retribution Chapter 2. Um, let me double check right here excuse me right retribution chapter two i died in del rio i wanted to make sure i got that last part correct and uh <laughs> congratulations so far almost 2900 of 2750 so we are fully funded with four days to go yeah. man congratulations how are you doing I, so i'm officially not announcing that i'm funded so uh <laughs> i've had about three or four people drop off uh, oh, no, so I'm, I'm super superstitious uh you have a little bit of a sports background so you know, sports are all superstitious as hell. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So I, I'm not saying that I'm funded. I still got to think what four days ago we got three days ago left on this campaign. Uh, I'm hoping I'm, four days ago, and if we hit three thousand, then that's when I could start doing some of the uh, stretch goals. Um, a friend of mine, his name's Rodney Ford, incredible artist. His artwork's on the uh, on the Kickstarter page. He did a print for me that is just insane, and so that I want to give away to all the people uh, who subscribe, if, if, you know, who back the Kickstarter. If we end up uh, going over three thousand, so mm -hmm. I'm hoping at least I get to do that. Last time we were able to hit that stretch goal for the first stretch goal. It's a process, you know. It's a process trying yeah. to figure out how to get this, how to, <laughs> to go out there and do this. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the guy who loves doing the whole marketing aspect of it. I'm, I always tell people I'm just trying to tell a story. But uh, hey, knock on wood, you know, uh, again, with it's four days, we'll be fully funded and ready to rock out this second comic. So what brought you into creating comics? I know we were talking about this a little bit before the interview, but to kind of just get it officially yeah. out there, you know, what, what drove you into it? I know you said you had a couple years uh, creating uh, comics all together. So let's uh, start breaking that down. So first, it's, it's obviously just a love of comics. So, you know, growing up uh, as a young kid, young teenager, you know, I did like everybody else. I watched Spider-Man every Saturday morning. And then I started getting into comic books, started collecting uh, probably at the age of 13 or something. Mm -hmm. And at that point, buying Spider-Man, buying some Hulk, X-Men come out, X-Men's the, the big deal. <laughs> but then it was Walt Simonson's Thor run uh, that really did it for me. And, and, and Thor is my favorite Marvel character. Uh, I know we, uh, you know that movie's coming out in July. It looks incredible so far. Uh, Taika is genius. So, I'm hoping so what's your thoughts on that? It, it feels like we're going to see the mantle passed off from uh, Thor to Jane. Man, there's so much debate on that right now because it's just like whether or not you know he's going to get killed off. I, I think Chris Hemsworth right now, first off, I think he's got more fans than any other Marvel uh, character as far as people who follow him. He's got like 54 million people who follow him on Instagram. And I think because you've seen such a turn in the arc of his story when Ica took over and we saw what he did with the Russo brothers in you know, Infinity War and also in Endgame. I don't think he's done. It'll be interesting to see if Natalie Portman signs on for another mm -hmm. movie because I don't know if this is her her spiel. You know, I mean, it looks like she's got the guns going and all that, but she's not really. She talked about it. She's she's never even worked out like she, like she did for this movie. So <laughs> that was something very very neat to her, and she you know she's got a million things you going know, on. I really thought uh, when they uh, took Thor and uh, stopped making him so serious and started adding that more mm -hmm. of that Marvel humor to him, that's when his character yeah. really started exploding like uh, Thor oh, Ragnarok yeah, for example like when you saw that humor in Thor Ragnarok uh, I thought that was really what catapulted him hey, and for somebody who's a traditionalist like I was and I say was when that movie came out I'm not gonna lie man butt cheeks tightened up a little bit because I was like oh what are we doing because you know Thor what was so great about that Walt Simonson run is that you really got to delve into the whole issue between father and son and the mm -hmm. problems there and 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 you got to deal a lot more uh, emotionally with what Thor was going through with his life and just the pull from you know Earth and, and you know well, Midgard and uh, Asgard and so on and and that story just talks so much about you know just the dysfunction between him and his father and that relationship yep. obviously the relationship with Loki so that was awesome um but the comedy it's never even been there i mean even even donny cates who's writing thor now i mean there, there's no comedy it's more you know uh serious and, mm -hmm. and so on so for taika to take it this way and obviously chris hemsworth and the way he's able to act and things he's able to do it, it's been a you know a perfect uh, marriage between those two and i think they've done a great job with it but yeah at first i was a little <laughs> but i love thor <laughs> ragnarok it's one of my top five favorite Marvel movies so uh, let's let's start reeling it back. Uh, I, I did. I, 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 I here. Yeah. Here he is. There's the guy himself. <laughs> so uh, how did you end up getting into uh, retribution? You know what what drove yeah. you into this? What was your inspiration for this? This seems like a rather interesting concept. So 
I, I, I'm pretty excited to uh, kind of start breaking that down. Real quick, though, we have uh, Dan Price saying, uh, I hope you're going to turn the screws on this joker. He means, hi, Robert. <laughs> How are you doing, Dan? Welcome to uh, the stream. Dan Price is the person I want to be when I grow up, although more than Dan. <laughs> so <laughs> Dan is like my Yoda, you know? Mm -hmm. I, don't, well, I don't know if you'd want to be Yoda or if you want to be Obi-Wan. You know, boy, we have, and I know Dan's a Star Wars guy. So if he had to be a Jedi, yeah, not Yoda. Yeah, maybe Obi-Wan. Maybe he'd be an Obi-Wan. I'm a Star Wars anyway. guy, too. We can't, we, we gotta, we gotta watch out for these subjects. We're gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Dan's a great guy. And he's actually someone who's helped me uh, just tremendously throughout this process <laughs> because the first book, when, when it came out, that was a, so first off, Retribution is based on a book that I have been writing for probably like the last 10 to 15 years. And, and it's based a lot, the book was based a lot on just the trauma that not only that I went through on a personal level growing up, uh, mm -hmm. you know, divorced home, abusive father, just all these different issues and even cultural trauma as being, you know, I'm Mexican, uh, you know, uh, old American, Mexican descent, but I actually have dual citizenship. My father's from Mexico. I've lived in Mexico. I've lived in Mexico City, in Matamoros, Tamaulipas, Monterrey, all these different places. And so just all the different aspects of what was involved in that childhood and into my teenage years. And then once I jumped into the media, I, I, I a while back, I used to work as a crime reporter. I covered crime in El Paso, Texas, covered crime in Tucson, Arizona, also out in Austin, Texas. And throughout those years of doing that, um, just got to see a lot of traumatic, pretty horrendous stuff that, you know, I, you, you, you wish that you, don't, you, you didn't see it. Like, um, you know, I hate to really bring down the, the, the temperature here, but like with the subject of like what's going on down in Uvalde, um, being someone who's been involved in those types of situations when you cover that, when someone's been killed, especially when it's a child, like you, you see this trauma and you see this trauma going through people. And so I started writing this story about how people handle trauma and, 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 and the types of uh, effects trauma can have on people in so many different ways, right? And different traumas, killings, this, that, emotional, sexual, and so on. And then I really fell back in love with comics about 11 years ago because I had I, I had this gap where I collected comics all the way up until like the early 90s. And then I had this 20 year gap and started collecting comics towards the end of the first, you know, like around 2009, 2010 type deal. And then I was like, well, why couldn't I make this into a comic? Because I, 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 I have always loved comic books. I, mm -hmm. I am one of those people that I, I'm not lying that I, I I love comic book art. I, when I was a kid, I used to love drawing figures, love drawing bodies. I was never good enough to do the whole faces and all that. That's why I never became an artist. But I have just been enthralled with comic book art, and and, and you know, and I, and I think people first. I don't give it anywhere near the credit that it deserves because it is artistry. Yeah. I mean, what these people do, the Todd McFarlane's, uh, you know, Walt Simonson's, uh, you know, Jorge Jimenez now, I um, mean, just, just the talent that they, you know, that they have and what they're doing with Joel Jones, who I love, you know, I'm so ticked off, they canceled their Wonder Girl run with DC, but just the talent they have as artists is it, it, what always pulled me into that industry. I mean, I, I, I bought comics more to see the visuals than I did actually read them, and now I'm actually uh, a big time reader, but, uh, I thought, why not take this story and add a visual medium to it? Mm -hmm. And that's where it's, it's, I joke with people, it's kind of factual fiction because the story I was writing was factual, but now moving into this realm, I've added some different aspects to it. There's gonna be some sci-fi. The first comic came out back in October. Our Kickstarter was fully funded. It came out, it's gotten a great response. Uh, did a Comic-Con, I've done some signings and just the interaction that I have with the people who pick it up, who read it, come back the next day, or and just visually, I mean, just the first comic came out. I mean, I don't necessarily try to get that. I mean, that's the artwork done by Julia Gulazzi. She is a uh, artist out of Italy who works for uh, uh, Charter Publishing. They do like Captain Canuck and so on. She's part of the artwork. Uh, this guy here who's smoking it. I don't know if you can see it really well, but anyway, that's Kevin Keane's artwork. Kevin I Keane love is that also too. Famous. Yeah. He's doing some of the inside pages. He's also somebody who right now has been working with McFarland. He's done covers. Actually, if you got Gunslinger Spawn today, the cover is done by Kevin Keene. So uh, Kevin Keene is doing artwork for uh, Todd McFarland, and I and I love this artwork. And I just had this vision that I'm like, I really want to tell this story, and I want to tell this story in a certain way 
with it being visual, but there also has to be a tone. And that's why we went black yeah. and white. We made the decision a couple of years back. I want to go black and white. I want to go Frank Miller Sin City. I want it to be gritty. I want it to be dark because what I'm talking about is very dark, is very um, hard to process sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you read it and even look at some of the pages because I've had people read who have read it and they're like, whoa, it's like this, like this kicked me in the face when I got to this page. And, 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 you know, that's what it's about. It, it is, uh, I've got mature labels on there because yes, it uh, does have language and it does have violence. There's no sexuality. There's no like, you know, nudity in it uh, at this time. Uh, but I mean, it's just, this story <laughs> to be is just more about, yeah, I mean, I'm, well, I mean, if, if it fits the story and I have to tie it in somewhere then you do it, but then, right now there's no need to have any of that in there. I mean, this story basically is about traumas and pains mm -hmm. and the main character R is someone who in the first book we find out that he's been kind of brought back to life by a deceased loved one who is his uh, love of his life Chi and, and and the name Chi obviously stands for a lot I mean just think of the word Chi what that means and so she come he comes back and he's thinking that he's brought back basically on a plot of vengeance where he's going to basically punish the people, get retribution on the people that uh, See had, did uh, there. murdered her. Yeah. And so <laughs> that, and, and the funny part is that the ret I say retribution is tied in throughout this whole comic, not just the retribution for what's been done to her. Mm -hmm. uh, he, she basically puts him on this path where he has to go out and get retribution to other people, you know, for other people who are suffering his own personal retribution because of what his previous life was, what he went through, who he was. I mean, there's just so many layers tied into it. And so, uh, you know, we've done the, we've done the comic. I said the second one's coming out uh, right now in my head when people ask me, well, how many comics it's going to be? I think I've got about eight to 10, you know, comics in my head for this arc of it, because I already have this whole arc set up as far as how I have, how I want it to run. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we'll see, you know, where it goes. But I mean, you know, knock on wood, the, the, the responses you know, hopefully still keep going the same. We've gotten great reviews. And, uh, up on the Kickstarter, I put some of the um, uh, critiques that we've received on this book, and and, and it's just it's just been a, a fun ride, and, and it's it's a story that I just personally really wanted to tell, I mean, just because of like what I've seen and what I've experienced throughout my life. So, how was it? I, I man, I got a couple questions. Uh, let me ask this one though. I think this one is the most important. How was it opening those wounds for you? Like uh, opening those those wounds, those traumas that you experienced before, uh, to kind of re revisit them for for this uh, this comic. It's tough, and it's funny that you ask that because so I also letter the comic, right? Mm -hmm. And um, in the second issue, there's a part that I letter that that is based on loosely based on something that's happened here in the state of Texas. Because okay, so the the book is actually based out of Texas. It's based along like the the border with Mexico and throughout parts of Texas. And and as I'm writing some of this, I, I, I as I as I was lettering some of it, like you forget what you wrote, right? And you start lettering, and you're like damn this is dark and <laughs> you just feel like you start remembering the things that you've seen and yeah it, it's been real tough there is a um, sequence that i'm writing which i think is going to be in the in the fourth or fifth issue and that was a personal one and it's something that you know uh happened when i was really young and something that you know was tied into you know family father and so on in mexico and writing that yeah it, it, it was really freaky because you, you know you try to categorize things you put them in a box you want to forget about mm -hmm. them and then you open that box and it's just as somebody who now is, you know, 30 years past when all this happened, you look back on it and yeah, it's kind of a mind blank, you know, it, 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 it's tough. It's tough writing it. It's tough, you know, having to read it and, and go through it. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's just what I want to get out there because I, I guess people, what, what I'm trying to do with this comic is for anybody who's gone through trauma, anybody who's suffered these type of pains or gone through these experiences, it's just to grasp a better understanding of the people that have gone through it, mm -hmm. the people who have, who suffer from it, and how they try to cope with it. Because we, we all don't cope with these things perfectly. Yeah, you know, we, we all have our different issues. Some people, you know, all you know, become addicts, drink and drugs, this and that. Other people, they find other avenues to to, to release this pain. And so I, I think that's what I'm trying to really do is get this story out and, and hopefully have people understand and, and, and just, uh, you know, get a better get a better viewpoint on how these victims or people who are victims cope with these you know, type of issues. Yeah. And uh, I think you really nailed it on the head. Uh, trauma is like such a, a slippery slope for so many people because... Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really, you know, everybody goes through like some sort of hell in, in their life, I, I truly believe, but it's really how you walk through that hell, 
kind of determines on you know the the outcome uh yeah. um afterwards and it's just it, it's it's such a deep and dark like story to kind of dive into like retribution what is retribution for you though like the ultimate like meaning of it um in, in your eyes retribution is, is basically finding oneself it, mm -hmm. it, it's it's I, I think about like getting retribution for for all that youth it, it's 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 kind of hard to explain but it, it's basically being able to get over your past get over the things that have happened to you or maybe that you've done to others and and realize that you can be you know that better person moving forward or at least just a a a, a complete person within oneself I, th I think a lot of times we have such a hard time accepting who we are and, and, and that's a lot of like what this journey for R is going to be, I think, is, as it goes along, is trying to figure out like, who is he? Because people ask mm -hmm. me, is he an anti-hero? Is he a villain? Is he, and, I, and I go, we don't know that yet. And, 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 I, and I don't think, I mean, it'll be interesting once we get to the, the last chapters of this uh, story I'm telling here is, you know, will we get there? Because I, I think from what I have tied in, and I hopefully people catch it as they read this, you can see that his mind is kind of all over the place as far as how he grasp what's happened to him what's mm -hmm. happening to him and what's happening to others and uh i just i think it's really interesting that you have uh this this character uh his name is simply just a letter just r uh, and he he like encapsulates uh, I, I mispronounced <laughs> he uh, he has so much like within him like you know the anger the violence and the rage and I just I like is there any sort of like uh, like coexistence between the two because I know like violence and anger and stuff it's so easy to feed into you know um, it, it's 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 another thing to kind of not feed into it so I wasn't sure if maybe like leaving you know like the embodiment of like rage and violence and stuff like just with the letter R had any sort of like meaning to it. I would say it's like so like R G. I, I would say a lot of the um, a lot of this story. I, I try and then it's also like just said visually how it is. I, I, I think of this as a very black and white story. Mm -hmm. I, I think of it very much as a, as, as a two paths, you know, two paths story. You know, which path are you going to go down and so on. But with saying that, there's so much complexity tied into each one of those decisions because you know people talk about like, the gray area. Well, I mean, yeah, there's always a gray area, but each choice that you make anywhere, if you're on this path or this path, each path is going to have, you know, its complex issues I and mean, things that you still have to get through and you still have to move through uh, with that. But I, I, I just think that with R, I wanted to um, like it, it sounds weird, but I didn't want to tie a lot of emotion to his name. Um, I didn't want. I wanted him to be like the singular symbol, and you know, mm -hmm. and that's just kind of like one letter, like the singular person, the singular symbol, and and I wanted to just basically have what he says, what his emotions are, his reactions, how he handles. I want people to look at those things. I don't want people to you know get tied into uh, uh, some other aspects of it, and I, and because I, it's like you know people are like, oh is he retribution? I'm like no, I go retribution is just kind of a title that, that that fits the whole story. It's not really you know what he is. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I think that's how I look at it. Is that this is a, a what would seem to be such such a simple character, but yet there is this this massive layer of you know, undertones underneath them with all the different things that, that go on inside of him and go on around him. And uh, you also mentioned that she had many different meanings to the name. What was uh, the particular meaning of uh, her name uh, for this book? Peace. Uh, I mean, she is that one person in his life that truly has brought his world whole. And for somebody who's never experienced that throughout his whole life, somebody who's, you know, gone through abuse, somebody who's gone through so much trauma, things like that, this is that one person that was that, you know, that, 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 that peace in his life. And um, the, you know, a, as he moves forward to the story, that, that takes on a different type of definition, but just from the basis of it, yeah, she is, is his home, is his peace, is his, you know, uh, uh, happiness. So was it hard to, to like to to write that character? I mean, because peace within trauma and 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 like personal like war is just it's such a conflicting idea, isn't it? It's so hard to like grasp that. I know for me, like yep. the troubles I've gone through, like when I felt peace, I didn't feel peace because I was like, when's the next thing gonna happen? Like when's yep. the next when when when's this illusion gonna be broken? Like was that character like at all like kind of hard to like write and, and construct? Well, I'm not female, so. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. There's hey, that. <laughs> hey, and I'll be honest, you know, Godia, I, I even tried to get some co-writers because I, I, I really, I really didn't feel 100% comfortable writing <clears throat> the female angle of this comic. Mm -hmm. 
but then I took a step back and I realized how I am writing this and, and what she represents to him in this comic is, is something that I mean, I don't want to give too much away, but the, uh, as you go through this, the, he's going to find a different understanding of what she is now in his life compared to what she was. Okay. So I, I, I think being able to write her as what she is now is a lot easier than, than writing who she used to be. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and, and with art, it's simple because I, I, I think that's the whole thing. Is there any kind of growth here? Is there anything going on with him? Uh, but with Chi, yeah, there's two totally, you know, different aspects of who she is and who she was so uh at this time <laughs> i'm having a hard time writing so, her, her character. what was some of the things you did to make sure you were nailing that uh that woman persona you know the, the female perspective to make sure you were nailing that and and, and not doing uh, an injustice on that character um, have every female I know read it <laughs> I, have a, I have a female editor first off if you're doing a comic have an editor I mean mm-hmm. that, that's that, that first you know we always talk about you got to have incredible artists we always talk about you know the the the, the printing the comic the paper use the colors this that and so on and I will say this if you're going to be doing a comic and, and this is just because I have you know years of history writing TV news, sports news, and so on. I mean, honestly, the best people you can ever hire are editors because they can help you keep that story, first off, more in line and focused. But Mm -hmm. yes, she is able to give me that perspective. She's able to give me a better perspective than what I may have inside of me. And and so that is one thing is that I am not afraid to go out there and get as many opinions as possible. Now, a lot of times, though, I still have to stick with what I want to do with the story, how I want to move it forward. Somebody may suggest something and and that may be, you know, a great suggestion, but it, it's it's something that doesn't fit the character, doesn't fit the story. Yeah. But, uh, yeah you you got to have editors and you've got to get the perspective from from the, the gender that you're writing about. So, yes, I had a <laughs> lot of females <laughs> look at uh, look at she and her character and so on and, and give you the thoughts and opinions. And uh, before we dive into the Kickstarter, uh, l- let's get a, a little uh, recap on the creative team involved with this uh, outside of you. Uh, like, how did you go about finding them and, uh, uh, you know, what their roles are on the project? Yeah, so it's a process. It, it, it's a process. And I will say this, and it's how I met Dan. It's like how I met you and how you meet so many people. The world of indie comics on Instagram is just probably one of the most fulfilling things I've had happen in my life. The creators that you get to meet, the people that you get to interact with, I mean, it is a phenomenal community. And now I'm starting to learn about that on Twitter as well. Mm -hmm. But I started up my little Instagram page. I went out there. I was talking about comic books. You meet people, you contact people and so on. And that's how it all went. I I went through about three, three or four different artists before I got to my main artist, who is Julia Gulazzi. She is out of Italy. And I just... I, I followed her page. I liked her artwork. We started communicating, and um, I had done some sketches. I had had some other artists do some mm-hmm. sketches. Rodney Ford helped me really achieve what I wanted out of the art character, and then I presented that to um, to uh, Julia, and then she did her own little kind of, I don't want to say twist on it, but her style, that she yeah. added to it, and I thought it suited really well compared to other people who I've done with, and then so I started working with her. So Julia has uh, just, you know, she, she is a... I want to say she's an independent artist, although she does work for Charter uh, mm-hmm. Charter Publishing, which is out of Canada. She does work for them. Uh, just incredibly talented. Uh, she has, you know, done Captain Canuck. She's done some other issues. Uh, she's done some other indie work as well. Uh, as far as my editor Nicole DeAndrea, I mean, she is just a superstar. She's done her own uh, uh, indie comic series, A Road Trip to Hell, which is just, which is a great, great <laughs> like. It, she just had her, I think, her third successful Kickstarter. So I'm jealous of her. Uh, but she is, I mean, she, I think, she's written for Screen Ramp. She writes for all these different people. She's an editor for different type of, uh, I think, smaller uh, indie comic book companies. She's just great, great. That had to have been like. Uh, shoulders. It had to have been a godsend finding an editor that had uh, a couple of successful Kickstarters too, right? Like you could oh, kind of yeah, like, oh, yeah. like you know, I'm sure you were able to hit her up. Like, hey, so what am I doing wrong here? What should I do better? Oh, yeah. Like she she gets all my scripts. She gets I mean, every time I make an edit or something, I send something to her along with a payment. But <laughs> that's just part of the, the whole industry. So I mean, basically that that's that's a small team. And then I I, I try. My, 
as I mentioned, my biggest love is art. Okay, so mm-hmm. artwork is everything. So Kevin Keen is a guy that I was a big fanboy of his artwork. If you go to his page, it's awesome. It's just black and white, black and white, black and white, black and white. It's all he does on there. Now, when he does stuff on the people, sometimes he color stuff in. Uh, he did uh, part of the first issue of Gunslinger Spawn that was color, but I mean, his art style is incredible. Just really, really gritty. I, I it just so, so just awesome. I mean, for me, it's just awesome. I, mm-hmm. it, it's something that just fell right into my wheelhouse. So I started talking to him, telling him how great I thought he was and so on. And then <laughs> he agreed to do a, a variant cover for the first issue. And that, that that's what I'm talking about here. How did uh, that did feel cover. when, when oh, you were able awesome. to get that? It, it, it's crazy because I, I've been fortunate, but I'll say this. I invested myself by paying these other people. So yeah, yeah. You, know, you get, it, it, you know, uh, the Kickstarter basically only pays the printing cost. It doesn't help me recoup what I paid to these artists, but yeah. The, my biggest thing is that visually, my comic had to be stunning, and mm-hmm. and that was a big, big part of it. Like I, I wanted this thing to be, you know, on the level of, of any other comic out there, and, and that's the response that I've gotten, and I'm I'm happy that I've been able to achieve that. And I'm I'm so thankful for the artists who've worked with me. So, uh, I, I you know I've got Kevin Keen, I've got Scott Oakley who's coming out with his own Kickstarter of uh, Bolaro, which will be coming out I think in June, and Scott Oakley also a different style of artist. A guy that I love, maybe more in an anime, uh, you know, uh, manga style. But I mean, just he, and he's got a ton of followers. He's out of England. I work with him. He's done some variant covers for me. He did uh, one of the things I like to do is I like to do tribute covers on my variants for the uh, Kickstarter. So the first Kickstarter we did a uh, Thor 337. You know, Beta Ray Bill smashing through the mighty Thor. Well, Julia did that, and it was our smashing through retribution, and he's swinging That's an so arm cool. instead of a hammer. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was such a and people Man, love you that know, cover. <laughs> we, we really missed out. They should. I felt like we should have had. Uh, we should have had him in Ragnarok. You had the little face on the, the oh, building. I know, I know, oh I know. my god! Hey, there's, there's a bunch of talk that he's going to be in this one. Yeah, and I, you, you keep getting those shots where they're on that planet. And that ship goes away, and Thor's mm-hmm. here, and you've got Korg here, but yet there's kind of somebody missing over here. I don't know. We'll see if we get Beta Ray. Be- Beta they're, they're, they're good at they're, they're good at misdirection up. too. Uh, we've oh, yeah, seen big, that with big. No Way Home uh, when they edited out the other two. Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. Okay, so Scott Oakley, um, and then um, Kath Lobo, who mm-hmm. is doing Power Rangers for Boom Studios. Wow. She did a, she did a very cover for me on this issue. Uh, just a great character. I mean, it's an awesome cover because it really captures, you know, Chi and R and their relationship and, mm-hmm. and just like what Chi is to him. Uh, Scott Oakley, this time around, he did my tribute cover, which is uh, Iron Maiden, The Number of the Beast, that awesome album cover where you've yeah. got like Eddie controlling the devil, what's well, Chi controlling R. So we did a, <laughs> we did a tribute to that, to that uh, album cover. Uh, Rodney Ford, who is a good buddy of mine that I, again, he's the one who kind of helped me really capture what I wanted art to look like. He just does a lot of side work for me. He does, he's done our thank you pages. He's done like our prints. I mean, Rodney Ford's a, a great artist. Uh, Kaija Lawley, uh, uh, Kaija Lawley, L-A-W-L-E-Y. She's out of England. And I love her. Her tagline's the best tagline ever. And it's like, I draw babes in blood. And, and there's nothing better than that. <laughs> and she was one of our very covers for the first issue. So there, I mean, there's just these different artists that I've, I've wanted to work with and I've been able to work with. And I've been so blessed to like just have their talents and be, be part of this of this series. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the tough part is, is is the job that I fail at doing. And that's going out there and really marketing the hell out of this and getting people to know what we got going on. Because right now it seems like we got something good going on. Yeah, you got a team of heavy hitters. Uh, do you think it's because of your love when when you were younger for the art in comics that kind of drove you to want that like in your own work? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah that, 100%. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I, I try not to downplay my own uh, part uh, in this uh, comic series, but for me, everything was about the art. It's, it's a, I, I knew visually it had to look a certain way. It had to have a, a, a certain level of artist on there and, and I'm not knocking anybody else. I'm just saying for the for the comic that I wanted to get out there, I knew I was going to have to invest in it. I have invested in it, but I've been ex- and I'm extremely happy with that investment because I, I think I've just got you know with Julia and Kevin as far as being artists on the inside pages and the work that they've done. Julia nailed it out of the park with the first uh, first issue. She again nails like the first ten pages in this issue, and then and then uh, Kevin takes over the, the last nineteen because there's like a story break there. So I wanted to have some fun and just do some different art and then you know three Ooh, I that's think pretty handled. Unique. yeah I, I i think issue three i'll probably be handled all by julia um but yeah it, it's just it, it's great to work with people who are that talented and i'll say this also that 
really, I mean, they're, they're the ones who are kind of teaching me about this industry and as far as being on time and what you're supposed to do and how you deliver this and how you give direction and everything. So I can't thank both of them enough. I mean, they've been fantastic. Yeah, that, oh man, I, I'm excited. This sounds like such a, like a really like in-depth and pretty insane a collection of works with issue one and two um real quick uh i, I know i know i keep uh, pushing this back and back but i gotta ask one more question um yeah, go ahead. oh hold on hold on i need to get a drink spaced out a little bit <laughs> brain yeah, fart. <laughs> all right oh man i i've totally lost my question wow oh, what the I just got so immersed by what you were saying. I totally sorry, spaced out. Sorry. Oh, no, you're, good, you're good. You're good. You're good. You should definitely. I know you were talking about uh, hosting some sort of podcast yourself. You should. <laughs> you, you are. You have the voice for it. Um, you said you did radio and everything for years, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. I yeah, did that, that's so awesome. Radio for like you know, twenty plus years. Now, I, I think the big thing with this story is, you know, I always tell people, you know, that the, the design looks awesome. People are like, oh, is this like Spawn or is this like that? I always tell people. If you know the movie Jacob's Ladder, mm -hmm. and if you think of The Crow, I, I think it's kind of a mixture of those two in the sense that as we go throughout this series, one of the things that I'm trying to create is that we really don't know what the hell's going on. Or we don't know um, what's real, what's not real. I think that that's a big part of the play. As I mentioned later on in this comic, we get a sci-fi turn to it, which is like kind of That's what it was. I that's yeah, what it was. I, I was going to ask the inspiration I, behind I, the, the split because yeah. you said there was two splits and uh, you got a different artist. So that's what I was going to ask was the inspiration for that because that's that's really cool that um, you had your original artist for issue one uh, for the first 10 pages and then for the, the next 19, you got a completely different one. So what what, what kind of inspired that twist without spoiling too much? Just the tone of the story. Although the, <laughs> I mean, the first page is kind of like a punch you right in the face type of page. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it deals with the reality that this that this comic has and, and uh, an aspect of what we have way too much of in this country. And it's something that I think uh, is pivotal to, to the story we're trying to tell here. So um, Julia depicts that and she depicts it, you know, pretty freaking gruesomely. I mean, she, she does she does a great job on that. That's but so awesome. her part was more about like, we're doing a little bit more background on the first one. I mean, uh, than the first one, because the first one, you see a little bit of the relationship there. You kind of get an idea of like what R is doing. And the first chapter is called Purpose. And it's just like he's being brought into this, uh, you know, into this, you know, new life to kind of, you know, do something. The second one, I died in Del Rio. I mean, I make a joke. I mean, it literally is. I died in Del Rio. And so you read like how this happened, how this took place. Mm -hmm. And then it takes a turn to where it brings us back into, you know, the, the, the current time. And, and I always tell people this comic is written kind of like in our, in our time uh, right now, as far as like what's going on, not just here in our world, but throughout the world. Uh, and I, that's one of the things that I like to do. I kind of like to jump around and I don't, you know, I, I, I kind of like to have that little, you know, re revisionist history and let's, okay, let's move mm -hmm. forward, let's move back and, and, and let's just, you know, try. That way we can get to learn more about the characters and hopefully the, learn, the more that we get to learn about who R was, the, the more that we get to learn, you know, about who R is now. We, and, and, yeah. And, why he's doing what he's doing and, and, and why maybe he's having the thoughts that he's having and what's happening to him. Yeah, so I mean, right now is I think is the perfect segue. Let's go ahead and start breaking down uh, the Kickstarter, diving into it. You know, we are looking at Retribution Chapter 2, I did, Died in Del Rio. A retribu re Retribution is a comic book series that deals with the dark aspects of love, vengeance, and a disturbed mind. You're at 2,919 of 2,750. So congratulations, 56 backers <laughs> with four days to go. Let's Let's go, man. Hell yeah. Uh, and see that 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 piece of art right there that's drawn by Rodney. I mean that that's that's what I, I say is his Hulk out version of art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and then uh, is, I, I is this uh that. is this like an intro yeah. video? Uh, so we can go ahead, we, did. Yeah. we can go we ahead and watch it. this. Uh, it's gonna if you try to talk though the volume from this is gonna override your volume just to Don't give worry, you a heads it's, up. It's short. Yeah, it's not super long. Ooh, I love the little intro too. Oh yeah, this art is gorgeous. Oh. 
Yeah, that is brutal. So he just takes that old man's head and smashes it. <laughs> oh my god. There's reason to the madness, okay? There's he's reason, breathe, reason. on a breathing machine. <laughs> oh, I, I know. And there's an explanation, <laughs> I promise. There's an explanation. But uh, yeah, as you scroll through it, so with the first 50 backers, um, I mean, that just gives you like the whole background of the story mm -hmm. and all that. And as you go down, you'll see um, <clears throat> the first uh, piece of artwork. Right? Yeah, okay, so there, there's our cover. I mean, just an insane cover done by Julia. And I love that cover. Uh, again, just giving you the perfect... Uh, you know, viewpoint of like what this relationship's about. Yes, it's she, she, she right there. Her, yeah, yeah. Up, up on her chair being carried by people underneath her. And there's Retribution kind of just doing her bidding up in front of her. And then as you scroll down, I mean, the uh, then we've got like for the first 50 backers, they're going to get this, uh, uh, I think it's seven by nine print that we do. And that's by Rodney Ford right there. And, mm -hmm. and I just, I, I love Rodney. That Ford is, that Rodney is fire. Is, yeah, he is just, it's, I mean, he's got such a cool Instagram page. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm just kind of a fanboy of all these artists that I have. I just like, I love their work. And as you go through, then um, as you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see that there's some pages there that have been, uh, that, you know, we gave everybody preview pages. Mm -hmm. Those pages are all done by, uh, so we got Julia early on, and this is, you know, just a little bit of history between R and G. Uh, and then, and you can see, I mean, the, the artwork is that I love black this and white right here. gray sale. Yeah, I mean, Julia just, Julia's just the bomb. We have a Beyond she Time in uh, chat as well. Uh, the, uh, the the person that was commenting on Twitter about the YouTube link, so that lo it looks like that few seconds worked. Welcome. Uh, sorry about the mishap. We had a uh, issue with my uh, streaming uh, service thing I was using earlier. So we are we are live and good now, though. So we appreciate you stopping in. And so that, that's some of the artwork that is done by Julia. Uh, that's uh, the last page that she does. Is one that's coming up, but this is just a gift. We're getting more of a history as far as what's going on with R, what's going on with his past, what she has meant to him. And Dude, then this we is have dark. a break. Yeah, and then we have a break, and that's where Kevin King comes in. And, and like I told you, just his black and white style, like what he does. And, and you just, know, um, I, I, I'm trying to remember, uh, the 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 uh ki stories for kids that were just gruesomely dark uh but the, the stories uh you tell and, and you know do you know what oh, it gives me that vibe with the shading and stuff i can't think no. of what, what's the name i have to look it up um stories yeah, I, to tell in the dark or something I, yeah, I'm, scary I'm, I'm stories sorry, to tell man. in the dark yeah yeah the, the, oh, the, scary stories to tell in the dark the, 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 the way the, the way the shading is done it always reminds me of those really like insane like crazy creatures and stuff i love it it, it, it just it just sets the tone and mm -hmm. so like so when that break comes and then kevin takes over you've got the tone of like what's going on wait, and, wait, and wait. is the old doing. man uh is he a preach pre uh priest uh, again you're gonna uh, okay, right, 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 back, back. <laughs> you know i get my mind gets churning and i start connecting dots yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I we've got a page eyes. coming up here yeah the eyes. And then this, this page coming up here by uh by kevin keen it's just insane if you scroll down a little bit more of that one right there i was yeah. like Wow, covered in blood. Uh, this is gorgeous. I'm like, that is just I, just the artwork that he did there. And like I said, he's got a little bit of different style as far as how he draws the art, but mm -hmm. it, it, it still it all suits the story and all helps us uh, you know tell the story. And if you scroll down more, then we've got those variant covers that I was talking about. Then and, and um, um, oh, and that final page. So those are the different tiers. I mean, th those might be hard for people to see. So if you scroll through those. It just tells you like what you can pick up as far mm -hmm. as you can get the previous comic. If you just do digital, you can you can add on the the previous one for a dollar. It's 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 not expensive at all. Uh, and so those are some stickers that Scott Oakley did for us. That I love those stickers. And so we'll be including a sticker set with all the uh, uh, all those. Wait, well, where, right where's uh, the stickers? Oh, the, the white the white part. So basically, starting from that. Uh, once you go into any kind of physical copy, mm. if you notice there on the tiers, you've got the, the so it says retribution. You've got four poses for. R, and then you've got G. I'm, I'm looking straight at that where, where, where I've got the reward tiers. If you look at the, like right there, if you want the original coverage, $10, you get okay, the comic yep, 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 yep. Okay, all right, I got you. So, sorry about that. That's, that's what I was saying earlier. Like, uh, if, Yeah, I know. I wish I could bring it. I, I could have brought No, you're good. You're, you are good. Sorry so we have that. actually some comments too, Dan Price. I've seen some of the pages, y'all. It's insane. Go back. This already did. Yeah, let me go ahead. We're going to put that link in chat. If you haven't already, be sure to go over here. Just check it out if you haven't. Um, if you're interested follow um back and leave a comment i heard leaving comments on uh backings helps a lot too it helps get that algorithm yep, boost exactly. Good. Yep, yep. <laughs> so right yep. there is the kickstarter anytime link. you yeah anytime you talk on uh, our instagrams or on our twitters on like kickstarters everything helps it helps get that little algorithm going and paying attention to us and then we have beyond time saying the black and white with red gives it a sixth sense feel a lot more blood though <laughs> yeah it, it's just uh 
I mean, there's a purpose for everything. And as we talked about it earlier, I mean, this comic, I, I look at it on, in a black and white mm -hmm. uh, type of scope, not only the decisions, but the characters, what happens. And obviously the red, I, I was I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Sin City. Yeah, I, mean, I love I it. I think love, it was good. Yeah, I just love what Frank Miller had, you know, did with that and, and, you know, the movie, everything. I, I just, I, I, I wanted to have that kind of a, I feel the comic. I love anything that's noir as well. So uh, that's, you know, also tied into this. You know, and I think it's, mm -hmm. I was gonna say, I think Go it ahead. fits the concept really good too. Cause like uh, the, yeah. the traumatic experience and everything is very dark. It's very dark to think about. Uh, the blood is very like visually striking. You know what I mean? So it makes that connection. Yeah. I, I think it, it complements each other. Uh, you know, they go hand in and hand. It, Storyline, and, it, and it's going to continue to fit that storyline as we go through because I mean that's, I mean as I've said, this is you know it's it's a mature comic. Mm -hmm. It deals with mature matters. It's got uh, some you know mature language and some violence in there, uh, no nudity, but it, it it deals with some really really harsh issues that that you know many of us have to face in life and and everything from you know death to this to that and so on and the different type of abuses out there uh but I, what i wanted to do is if you scroll down i wanted to show people the uh if you go all the way past the the tier section the reward tier you can see the um I, you know i did some bigger pictures that's yeah, a very right cover so the one on the left there cat lobo that's just like she and she's almost treating her like her little pet and, mm -hmm. I, and I love that I just, I mean, what she was able to capture in there, and again, Kath Lobo is who's working on the Power Rangers now with uh, with Boom Comics, and then Scott Oakley uh, did that, <laughs> just insane. Yeah, that is uh, brutal looking. Cover, yeah. <laughs> I love how they're both like two like polar opposite ends. Two ones like very calm yeah. and like sitting, and the other one's ready to kill. <laughs> I mean, just insane. And then the variant cover, which we also offer a foil cover, and so foil. That was my number one seller the first time around. We mm -hmm. did a foil cover on the variant cover that Kevin Keen did, so we're doing it again. We've, if you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see we've got this uh, version this wow. time. And, and again, it's just you know, there's she's eyes, and she's looking down at her, you know, at her guy mm -hmm. uh, doing his thing. And that, and and with the with the red, the the, the foil just pops and explodes. The, the logo looks incredible. The blood going everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean. That foil cover, that that was the best cover that, that we had with the first uh, first go round as far as how it sold. And then after that, just got the creative team and so on. But, so let's um, uh, let's kind of go through these tiers a little bit, uh, real quick, um, yep. just to touch base on the prices. <clears throat> so uh, let me scroll up here so we kind of do this at the same time. Um, I so didn't put the digital tier there, but yeah, digital tier. Uh, what is it? Five? Yeah, five dollars. You can get the digital copy of this comic book. You add on a dollar if you missed the first one. Uh, you know, we'll do both of them. So for six bucks, yeah, that's not you bad. get both comics. Yeah. And, and, then, and how, then how many pages is that all together? It's about 60 pages because the first one's 28. The second one is 32. So yeah. So uh, you have a uh, beyond time saying these covers make me want to look closer and once away at the same time. I know it's, 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 it's <laughs> visually striking. For me though, I love gore. I love blood. So like, I'm yeah. like, man, I need this. Um, so it's not all blood and gore though. I mean, <laughs> my biggest joke is I tell people, the, the basis of this story is a love story <laughs> and it really is true it, it's the basis of it, it's a love story but anyway uh first here if you just go with the original cover um on chapter two you get that and then you also get the sticker set that that, that goes along with it that's ten dollars you know see and then the, the shipping kicks in after that we start doing the um, the variant tier so cast uh very and what's funny with cat cat posted that on her on her uh page on instagram it cracked me up because a lot of people are like oh that's really beautiful but really creepy too and, and i love that people are getting that feel from the mm -hmm. uh variant cover that she did so you get cast variant cover and then you get the regular cover along with the sticker set and that's for 20 dollars and then obviously you know, ship kicks in after that and then uh then you get scott oakley and that's our tribute cover that's going to be the iron maiden uh number of the uh beast album cover that we did there with the sticker set and then we get to the foil covers and that's where we were, you know that's where uh, you know kevin king's foil variant kicks in that one's a little bit pricier and we still i can still order uh some of the back ones and i'm not gonna lie i've got a magic number that i haven't hit in my head but i do have a cutoff as far yeah. as those foil covers because i, I don't want to you know just do 10 billion of them i want I, yeah, i'm hoping that eventually there'll be some value to these things yeah you, you gotta make them a little rare I, I get it yeah yeah and I also want to add value to the people who are buying them. So you can also just buy the uh, Kevin Keen foil bundle. And then uh, I, I say the Fantastic Four, if you want all four covers, which I think that one this time around is our most popular. Uh, I think we've had our, the most backers on the yeah, Fantastic 14. Four. That, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And then uh, we did a, so Julia said that she would do an 11 by 17 digital uh, commission, uh, you know, 
commission artwork for you. Uh, we're going to do that on really nice paper. Get that out to people. Uh, and, it's, and it's basically, she doesn't have to draw retribution. If you want her to draw Superman, if you mm-hmm. want her to draw uh, Wonder Woman or something like that, she'll be glad to draw that for you. But that one, I think there's only one left on that. I think we've already sold the first. Uh, and uh, this looks like it's the only one that uh, gives you the signed option too. Yeah. Yep. And so, yeah, that's and, awesome. And, and that's, that's going to be a little bit more delayed because it's coming from Italy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, we're going to get that done and, and get that out to people because... I mean, she just does great artwork. I mean, mm-hmm. Julia just, I just love the work that she does. And, and and I think that she's able to capture, one of the coolest things about Julia is I love how she captures emotions. And I, and I love how she's able to really add a feel to the uh, yeah. to the page as you read it and, and you go through it. Because I think, I think that's one of the toughest things. And, and one of the things that I've been lucky and fortunate enough with is the people that I work with are really able to translate what I am saying into a visual medium that really, you know, tells that story mm-hmm. as well. I really like this, uh, the, the way Kevin was able to add some expression to uh, R as well when he's drenched in blood. And you kind of see him like relishing in it. Like he's like, he's like bathing in om- almost, you know, I, I really, I really just thought this was visually striking as well. So real quick, we already kind of broke down the creative team, but let's put some uh, pictures uh, to the names. So right here is uh, our... Uh, are, um, a thinner guest. and less hairy version of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost called you host for whatever reason. Whenever I go through this, I always call uh, everyone I'm interviewing the host. I'm like, well, wait, I'm the host. Yeah, Cody, you would be the host. <laughs> um, and then here's the artist, of course. Here's Julia. Kevin and, hiding uh, behind uh, a. I know. It's his <laughs> signature, which is epic. He has an epic signature. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's Kevin there. And then uh, there's Rodney Ford, my guy. I mean, just love Rodney. I mean, mm-hmm. Rodney's just, I mean, he, 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 his artwork is so cool. I mean, I, I always tell people it's kind of like really abstract manga funky style. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's hard to tie so much into it. Zip Allegri is another guy who jumped on with us this year. Zip's just an incredible person. Um, he's uh, from, like, you know, part of where I grew up, he's from that area. I think he's up, up in Chicago now, but he did our thank you page and he just did a wicked, wicked uh, depiction of our space. And, mm-hmm. and you know, we, cause we, we, we do a thank you page. We tie in all the names of all the backers of the comic. We put them all on there just thanking them for their support and so on. And then at the bottom there, you've got you've got Nicole, our, our editor, uh, just the gal that just really helps keep my mind and my story in check. And uh, she is just, yeah, she's fantastic. I mean, she just such, such such a great help. And then, uh, so you hit your one stretch goal, right? No, no, it's sort of hit our funding. Uh, uh, oh, your funding goal. Then, Sorry, yeah, misread yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, well, You're close to hitting your three thousand, though. I know, I know, and I hope we do. I really do because I have got Rodney did just a wicked, wicked uh, <laughs> a picture that you can see on my Instagram page. Everything is cheesy comics shop. So mm-hmm. it's cheesy comics shop, and it's comics with with an S plural. And if you go to my Instagram page at uh, cheesy comic shops uh, uh, dot com, not dot com. Uh, cheesy comic shop uh, on Instagram. You can see the uh, artwork that he did, and just it's just awesome. I mean, Which uh, it, it, I do have uh, your Twitter and your Instagram linked uh, in our main cool. chat. It linked underneath yep. you. Um, I you have a Facebook too, right? Um, yeah. Well, I have a personal Facebook. See, so I, I felt like I couldn't there. find it, so that's <laughs> like, why I didn't yeah, add it. Yeah, I didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not the biggest fan of Facebook, so although they own Insta, but still, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not. I, I don't use mm-hmm. Facebook a whole bunch, you know. I mean, Instagram has been fantastic for me, which is like funny because, like, you know, again, it's still the same company, same money. But Instagram has been great. Uh, the reception from the people who not only follow, but the people who I've been able to meet and really get to know has been fantastic. So it, it's just been a great ride. And, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, once we get this one done, that we can get the next comic out. I was I was hoping that before the end of the year, but I think we're probably going to go early of um early you know 2023 mm-hmm. and hopefully so we did one comic last year we did we're you know we're doing the one this year but i mean but again you know it was it's, it, i think it was less than six months ago uh about six months ago when we did that uh uh the first comic so i'm trying to get them out every four to six months is what i'm trying to do here so you're looking to get chapter three the abyss uh it says the funds raised will be used to pay for the artwork printing as well as rewards stretch goals any extra funds can be put back into the future issue so yep. Chapter three. Um, but real quick though, this is pretty much everything that we covered for uh, Kickstarter, right? Yep, 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 yep. So let me go ahead and remove this. Um, so what are we looking at for uh, chapter three? You know, without really spoiling too much. You know, where are we gonna see R and Chi going, um, and what type of a story to expect? 
Yeah. So I, I think what we're going to see in chapter three is we're going to get a really good look at R. I mean, at this point, because, you know, chapter two gives us a basis on the relationship. Chapter three really, really gets into R. And then he kind of hits a crossroad. And then we also start bringing some other characters into the mix. Uh, mm -hmm. This is something that, I mean, you can't go about killing a lot of people and not have it be noticed, right? So it's like, um, we do bring in some other factors into the story and that's when things, I tell people, I mean, it does get bonkers. I mean, it really is going to get bonkers in the sense that once we have chapter four, we go into chapter five. Um, also, one of the aspects that we do with this, there is some bilingual, uh, the comic is somewhat bilingual. We do have some Spanish in there. We'll have notes in there, so obviously people understand what's being said. As I mentioned, this is, you know, across the state of Texas, but also uh, involved a lot with the border of Texas between mm -hmm. Texas and Mexico. So uh, there is some, uh, uh, we, not the second one, but the first one we had, we had a little bit of Spanish language in there, but um, it, it just really takes a, a crazy turn and then uh then the, you know, honestly it's like the poop hits the fan because yeah. everything gets wild yeah yeah <laughs> so, dude that's so awesome so for anyone that's yeah. watching that's kind of on the fence uh for backing this kickstarter what would you like to say to them directly and we're gonna go ahead and put that kickstarter in the link one more time so yeah for anyone that's kind of just on the fence about backing this uh what would you say to them directly that it's don't it's, don't judge a book by its cover yes it <laughs> it's a love story uh, well, <laughs> it's a, like i said we're, we're, it's basically you know it's a story about you know trauma and pain and how mm -hmm. we handle that and, and basically you know being able to understand those traumas within ourselves but for those of us who you know, have been fortunate to not have to have had dealt with a lot of trauma and they know people who have being able to get a better understanding and a better you know grasp of their coping mechanisms and, and how they may move through life. So I, I, I think it's just really a, a, a good story in the sense that it is, you know, very, pers I would say very personable in the sense that I, I, I think you can really get attached to this character because mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's one of the cool aspects of it is as you go through this, it, it's really gonna be, you know, based on the reader as far as how they feel about, is this a good person, a bad person? You know, do you understand the decisions that he's making? I, I think there's a lot of complexities in this and the story that I, I think people, you know, can grasp because I, I've seen it. I've seen it so far with the people who've read it mm -hmm. and what they've, you know, responded to me. So I, I, I just want people to to give it a chance in the sense that, you know, it, it's not. A, I'm not. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is not a book I would say for anybody 13 and under. Yeah. You know? uh, uh, I, I would not give that to them. I, I think it's just a book for people to understand, you know, how the world of trauma affects people and, and how they can get uh, you know, just a better understanding, better look at that. Yeah, that, that man, I really love that explanation. So where can we see you going outside Retribution? You said you only had an idea of like a limited number of issues that you wanted to do. So any ideas for anything kind of outside of this genre? Yeah, I, I love space, man. I am a sci-fi guy. And, <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny, I talk about Thor. I, I, I don't think I'd ever want to write Thor, but I'm not lying I, 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 when I say this. I am trying to put something together. Um, I'm trying to write a story about the Silver Surfer. I mean, he um, it's a character that just its weird, but personally just has really tied into me. Just the whole isolated aspect of like what his life has been mm -hmm. and, and in a lot of ways who he is, because once he's made that decision to, you know, save Zen Law and then now he's out there doing, you know, uh, Galactus's bidding, and then obviously we've seen all these different aspects. Donny Cates killed him, which yeah. just ticked me off. <laughs> it's like, God damn um, you, Donny. I, I, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm somebody who likes writing in that that dark realm, you know. Uh, which is funny because I love comedy movies, I, I love drama and all that. But man, you give me a movie that's dark and and you know weighs on people. That's why I loved like what well, everybody else did too. I, you know, I love the Batman and the new one, but also I love the Dark Knight because. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I think there is so much to learn from pain. There's so much depth that you can gather out of uh, a story that, that's written in, in that way. And uh, uh, I, I just, I love, I, I just, I love what I have in my head as far as what I want to do with the Silver Surfer. And I was joking with you. It's like, yes, I'm, I'm doing my history because yes, I had been gone for a while. I have a good basis <laughs> of the Silver Surfer, but I'm trying to read what everybody deems to be the best stories out there um, involving him because uh, there's a gap. I believe that's still out there to be told. So I mean, that would be awesome if I could do that. I think after this first arc on uh, Retribution, if it does really well, I, I have some pretty solid ideas as far as what I want to do with the second one. And that's where it would take 
a lot more of a i want to say a sci-fi horror type of uh angle to it okay yeah man that would be cool too i love me some sci-fi horrors uh yeah i'm a big fan of like games like dead space uh i love dead space so much and uh, i think you know i think uh, that's kind of a genre that really uh you have endless possibilities i feel oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think this story i can have a lot of fun with and then i don't know i mean there's, maybe there's some other stories i'd like to tell i mean it, 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 it'll it, it's right now i'm just focused on this and i'm focused on, on the side of the little silver silver surface story and then we'll go from there and see what happens all right well hey i think this is a perfect time to begin wrapping things up Yep. Robert, I really appreciate you coming on, breaking down Retribution, and everything in between. Uh, we definitely have to set up a time to talk more Thor. Uh, I'm a pretty big Thor oh, fan you myself. Got, you got uh, yeah. After the movie comes out, we got it. Uh, yes, please. I watch everything. Yes, please. I, I am. It's, <laughs> I'm not as good reading the comics as I should be. You know, keeping up with them. Like I said, I'm trying to catch up right now. It's hard when you write and you read because. Mm -hmm. you, but as far as movies and TV shows go, oh my, I'm enthralled. Like, you know, Moon Knight just watched. Oh yeah, uh, what, what'd you, so what'd you, you know, think of Moon Knight? I kind of, I thought like the first two episodes were like, were the most like action-y and then it kind of did a lot of world building the last couple, but then I, the last episode I felt was really action-y again. See, what's funny is I I am in the minority where I don't think the, fin the finale stuck the landing the way I wanted mm -hmm. it to be. I mean, I, I like this series a lot. I thought they did a great job. I love the, you know, different characters, the different people inside of somebody, different uh, personalities, mm -hmm. you know, uh, multiple personalities. I was kind of excited to see, uh, what I, was it, uh, the Scarlet uh, Scarab? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was, you know, when they, that, that, I, I like that. I, I just, I, I don't know how to explain it. I, I didn't, it, it just feels rushed. I don't know why Marvel, and I think they're finally breaking away with it with She-Hulk. But this whole thing about six episodes, six episodes, just let the story be told. Yes, and yes. It, it doesn't have to be so formulatic. Formula, no, what am I trying to think? Formulatic? I, I, I can't say that word. But it's like, damn, break the formula. Just let a story be what it is. Because, um, like, Peacemaker. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. Peacemaker was just phenomenal. And that... There are so many, it's a comedy, but there's so many dark aspects to it. My, my, my favorite character is Vigilante, and he's mentally gone. When he got blown I mean, up by the grenade. Oh my God, dude. I, so I was so not seeing, uh, who was it, Moore? I think it was Moore, right? Uh, um, the, the leader of uh, the group? Oh, uh, um, um, what's his yeah, name? It's with an M. Oh, ah. Uh. That's a great actor, though, and, and he's actually coming out in... Uh, it, it, I blew my three. fucking mind when he was one of them. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 dude, yeah, and that just goes to show you, like, the DC, the DCU can do it. They just... I don't, what's going on? I don't know. Come yeah, on, guys. They so many other movies. I mean, they, they just blow up with so many other movies. Just like Sony blows. I, although, you know what? I'm one of those people. I like Morbius. I know not a lot of people. I like the fight sequences in it. it. I thought uh, yeah, the, the love story cool. The love story kind of felt uh, stale a little. Yeah, it was kind of weird. Yeah, it was kind of a weird love story. But I mean, it was it was a cool movie. I I, I like the Venom movies just because I'm a huge Tom You know, Hardy I heard uh, Jared Leto was kind of a dick, though, on set. And he uh, walked around like with the crutches. And he made... Uh, well, he's a method actor. Yeah, yeah he made cast actor. members like push him in a wheelchair. I mean, that's kind of taking yeah. it a, a little too method well, for me. Well, what he did with the Suicide Squad, with the first one, <laughs> Suicide Squad, not the Suicide Squad. Yeah, they, there was a lot of incidents as far as what he did during that. I mean, he's a great actor. I mean, mm -hmm. we're not going to argue that. But I mean, now there's this whole argument as, you know, do you really need to be a method actor because it just throws everybody else off on the set and, and the people because you're always in that, you know, you're always in that mode. You're mm -hmm. always in that character. But, uh, you know, he's a great actor, so yeah. it's kind of hard to criticize what he's done. But, uh yeah, I, I, it, there's so much out there. There's, there's so much great TV, and, and I love watching it. And I think what Miss Marvel's starting up pretty soon. And uh, there was something else that just finished though that I oh oh Halo. Okay, so you talked about gaming. I am not a big gamer. Okay, I I, just, I heard Halo I sucks. So I'm excited to hear what your thoughts are. No, why? Okay, well see. Okay, look again. I am not a gamer, so I can understand it from a gamer's point of view because I, I get, as I mentioned with Ragnarok and the second Thor movie. My butt cheeks tightened up a little bit because I really, you know, wanted Thor to be this, you know, this what I knew. I, I wanted it to be Walt Simonson. Anyway, um, 
I thought Halo was incredible. I mean, I, I really did. The, the ending was rushed, and, and man, they could have done, done a lot more with the CGI. Uh, there's a joke that they they, they kind of ran out of money by the time they got to that episode. <laughs> So but speaking I of CGI, though, great story. Um, we were talking about the new Thor and how everyone's kind of shitting on gore. Like, I I heard the the argument that, like, MCU kind of heard the backlash about She-Hawk. And, like, why would you want them to add more CGI if you're going to complain about the CGI in She-Hawk? You know? It, yeah, I, I think it's because, in all honesty, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Irad Ribic? I, 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 I just butchered his name. The concept with what they did with Thor, I, I thought, you know, we have so many characters that get introduced in Marvel and get introduced in, in DC Comics. Okay? I mean, you can only introduce me. I mean, there's so many out there. And I thought what Jason Aaron was able to do with Thor the God Butcher uh, it was just phenomenal. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, and, and I think the look that they came up with and the way that, you know, the, the symbiote, the, 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 the uh, you know the entity inside of him, the way he's able to translate that, and his hand becomes a sword. No, do you think? Do you I think they're going to have that. the necro sword? Uh, there's a lot of argument that there, we might not see that. But it's interesting because I guess the necro sword, the whole basis of that aspect, would still be controlled by Sony. I don't know. Remember, Sony has yeah, everything. Did Spider you see? Uh, did you see No Way Home? Yeah. Because at the oh, end. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The little, the little. Uh, no, no, no. What do you mean at the end? Hit me up. Hit me. Up. Remind me. Uh, Tom Hardy gets time. blinked back into the Sony verse, but he oh, leaves yeah, a little yes, bit yes, of the yes, symbiote. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that kind of led me to believe that we might be able to see it, but then, then again, I don't know. Um, God Bomb, like I said, I have up on my wall. That's one of my favorite Thor runs. I, I like you see you see young Thor, yeah. you see uh, King Thor, and present day Thor, and then you see Thor wielding two hammers, which we've already seen in the MCU. But like, dude, I think we have potential to see that again. If Jason Aaron, I mean, Walt Simonson is still my goat. He's still my boy. He's still my god. I mean, I, I love Walt Simonson as a, just as a human and everything. But Jason Aaron is just an incredible writer. I mean, that's one of the coolest things for me. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm more, now that I'm more into reading, I'm really loving certain you know writers who are out there. And you know, Tom Taylor's another one. I mean, <laughs> and just you know, Scott Snyder and, and what he's done with Batman. I mean, just just. Um, uh, I'm, gonna just, I'm just throw names out there right now. Oh, who, who's taking over Batman right now? Uh, Chip Zdarsky. I love Chip Zdarsky. Okay, and then Donnie oh, yeah, Cates yeah, doing yep. his deal. But but uh, what Jason Aaron did with Thor was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm not gonna lie. Again, I'm, I'm I, I can be one of those uh, old fuddy duddies and be like, eh. when he introduced the Mighty Thor with Jane Foster, um, that one I was like, eh. but I kept it. I made myself read it, and I love that he did. I mean, Jason Aaron. I mean, he just writes compelling stories and what he did with that whole for the god butcher that whole you know thor and god of thunder series is i mean you have to get it you have to it's get so that. insane too because the way yep. the way gore is overtaken you know at the end you know, like from his own flesh and blood or because yep. he claims himself to be a god yep 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 i thought i was like damn dude didn't see that coming at all like <laughs> um but yeah we so we uh we we we, we, we need to be wrapping this up we we need to save this yeah, podcast sorry. for another time you're, you're good. we had beyond time saying uh so beyond time over on youtube saying one of uh, their favorite old school comics is when silver surfer encounters thor in the azure it really uh level sets just how powerful and plague silver surfer is mm -hmm. oh, um yeah. I, I, I yeah i'm not well so versed much. in that no, they, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, if you go back into the day, I mean, just the interactions between Thor and the Silver Surfer, Thor and Galactus, there's some good stuff back in the old well, days. Well, Th Thor going up against Galactus, too. Uh, well, I think he had the Necro Sword, or what, he had some sort of a uh, God, God Killer Sword, or some sort of uh, blade, I remember, that he had yes, to use. Yes, he had, he had the blade, yeah, that was what was written by Jason Aaron. But no, old school was like way, 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 way back when. Thor threw Mjolnir hard enough to where he actually moved Galactus. That was like the big whoa, like mm. how strong is Thor and so on. But just the battles between the battles between the Silver Surfer and Thor have been fantastic. But uh, I'll let you wrap it up because yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I will yeah, talk yeah. forever. I'll yeah, talk yeah. Forever I, I <laughs> so it. guys, uh, we, we we do have to be wrapping it up. Be sure to check out Retribution Chapter Two. Right there is the Kickstarter. One more time, uh, I Wait, died in four Del days Rio. Left. Four days left. Four days four left. Days left. Let's make it happen. Well, it's already gonna happen, but let's hit that back. Um, that that yes, stretch let's, goal. Let's get Get everybody some presents, some cool stuff. We'll send you cool stuff. Just keep bidding. And uh, so this is uh, this is Cody. We are here with our good friend Robert Garcia, and we hope you guys had a fantastic Wednesday. Tune in tomorrow. We are going to be talking to Christopher Carter, the CEO of Global Comics, uh, one of the new apps that I've kind of just recently stumbled on. So I'm pretty excited. He has a lot of cool things out there for indie comic creators. So with that being said, guys, we are going to be wrapping it up. But most importantly, keep it geekly.